For this project, we're going to hand lay a crepe wool beard and mustache on my buddy actor Brian Landis Falcons because he loves doing this stuff. Brian and I have worked together quite a bit, but we did a play together back in 2005 where he sat in my chair for a six-piece silicone makeup that took two and a half hours to apply, then a 45-minute drive to the theater to do a 12-minute play, then a 45-minute drive back to the studio, and another hour in the chair to get the makeup off. I think we did it eight times in all. That's what I call dedication. So for me, it's always fun to work with somebody who's really into this stuff. So what we're gonna do is hand lay a crepe wool beard and mustache that's ultimately gonna look something like this. This is actually a lace piece with a little bit of hand laid hair on the upper cheek. This is a beard that was done by Oscar nominee John Blake at IMATS in Pasadena, California a few years back. What we're gonna do first is apply a layer of top guard to Brian's face. This will help the adhesive hold better and come off easier and faster when we're ready to take it off. It can go on very thin. More is not necessarily better or stronger when it comes to top guard or to the adhesive we're gonna use. So, we're all set to go. We've got some hair already prepared. We've got some ash blonde, light blonde, and a little strawberry blonde that we've already gone through a hackle with. It's a little bit light, but facial hair is frequently a little bit different than head hair. This is way more than we're gonna need, so what I'm gonna do is cut part of this, and we'll separate a little bit of it. Now there's a method to hand applying a crepe beard. I have a graphic I'll show you here that shows the pattern and the order. We'll start at the bottom of the chin and go backwards, then come forward, because basically you wanna be sure that you're working from back to front so that the uppermost layers are applied last. So, for example, if we were doing the mustache, we'd start at the outside and work our way in toward the nose. With the chin, we'd go back a little bit, so the bottom part would be the outermost bit of hair, and then we would work our way forward up under the chin so that the bit directly under the lip is the last bit we'd do. Now we're going to start to apply it. We're going to be using Telesis 5 silicone adhesive and a little bit of Telesis thinner because we don't need to go full strength. A little goes a long way and we'll thin it down a bit. We'll do just a little bit at a time. Since we're doing this in sections, we don't want to use too much adhesive and risk drying it out. Telesis 5 is a fantastic adhesive, but it's expensive, so we don't want to waste any of it if we can help it. Notice how I'm gently pulling on the hair after the adhesive is dried to remove any loose crepe that might still be attached. I need a rat tail comb so I can pick through the hair to thin it and to remove any hairs that aren't stuck in the adhesive. If the hair is too thick, the beard will look fake. The closer you hold the hair near the end, the thicker it's going to be when you attach it. If you hold it back further, it goes on a little bit lighter. Now, when you're working in fairly close proximity with your talent like this, it's always a good idea to make sure you've bathed in the morning beforehand. If you've been drinking coffee or if you're a smoker, you might want to have a breath mint so you're not causing your talent to hold his breath to keep from gagging because you've got nasty monkey breath. We always want to be considerate of our actors. And if your actor's a smoker, you may want to offer him a mint as well. Brian's a smoker, yet his breath is minty fresh. Having two pairs of hands can help move this process along quite a bit faster. But not this fast. We've jumped ahead a bit to keep you from getting too bored. I know it's much more fun to actually do the work than to watch someone else do it. Part of the reason I'm doing this project in the first place is so that I can get better at it because I don't have the opportunity to hand lay hair very often. And also because hand laying hair is becoming a dying art. It's really different from most any other type of makeup an artist might be asked to do and some artists think it should be the hairstylist's responsibility. It's also really tough to match for continuity on a daily basis which may be the biggest factor in why the art of hand laying hair is disappearing it's much easier to maintain continuity with a pre-made lace beard. 
So let's just say I'm trying to do my part to help preserve a part of our craft before it's gone. Hand laying here really isn't that hard to do, it just takes some practice, like everything else. There is no one way to do anything in our business. There are just different ways to do things. Hand laying a beard is much more time consuming than applying a lace beard. A lot of what you do depends on what the end result's going to be. How close is the viewer going to see the beard? Hand laying hair may be inefficient for a theater application. To have to do this six to eight times a week, two hours to apply, and then to remove it for a show that may not even be more than two hours long, it can be daunting. But then you don't have to worry about continuity from show to show. In a pinch, if it's decided that a character suddenly needs sideburns or a mustache, and you've got some crepe wool in your kit, and every artist should have a little bit of everything in his or her kit, then boom, in a pinch, you may be able to get that done. And if you know how to do it, it won't wind up looking awful. The ultimate goal here is to make sure that the hair you're attaching looks like it's growing out of the skin. It'd be real easy to put on some adhesive and then put the hair into it sideways. From a distance, it might look pretty good, but up close, not so good. It's about selling the illusion up close, whether it's for high def, theater, film, video, whatever. If you go for the best possible results from the get-go, then that's what you're going to wind up with. Good looking stuff. Crepe wool or crepe hair is not the only material you can use for laying on a beard. You can use human hair, synthetic hair, yak hair. I may have straightened this wool a little too much for facial hair. Facial hair has a tendency to be a little curlier, a little more unruly. If you use human hair, unless you kink it with a crimper before application, the human hair that you'd use to tie a wig, for example, is way too straight naturally because it's head hair, not facial hair. This is going to be a fairly close cropped beard when it's done, but we'd have a heck of a time trying to apply the hair short. That's why we're laying it on long and then we'll cut it to the finished length. When you're applying the hair, you want to apply it in the direction you want the hair to be growing. The reason we're using Telesis instead of Spirit Gum is because of its holding strength, its flexibility when it's dry, and because Spirit Gum is a skin irritant to almost everybody. I'm unaware of any allergic reactions to Telesis products, but I'm sure someone will correct me if I'm mistaken. Ironically, Spirit Gum has been the traditional adhesive used for this kind of work. I rarely use Spirit Gum at all, and never for this. The problem with spirit gum for stage work is that under the heat of the lights, actors tend to perspire. Perspiration dissolves spirit gum, and when spirit gum dissolves, things that were glued become unglued. And unlike a movie or television show, when the director can call cut, makeup can come on and reapply what's come loose. If a beard starts to come loose during a scene on stage, the scene suddenly becomes about how to keep the beard on and is no longer about the scene. Now I'm taking a fat tooth comb through the hair after the fact to thin and remove any loose strands. Like with any makeup project, you don't want to rush. When you rush, when you get in a hurry, you make mistakes. And mistakes can be costly, not just in terms of time and money, but in terms of your reputation. Don't let anyone rush you unnecessarily. You can see here I'm using a pair of tweezers to get in close to pull out any stray hairs and to make sure that all the hairs are facing in the right direction. Deciding how much time to allow for the application comes with experience. Obviously, the more frequently you do something, the better you get at it and the less time it takes to do. But I always try to Scotty factor everything. What's the saying? Underestimate and overdeliver. For example, I told Brian to be here today 20 minutes earlier than I needed him so he would actually be here on time. And he was. I only know to do that from experience. How much crepe do you need to do a full beard and mustache? A little crepe goes a long way. It needs to be straightened a bit, which can be done by steaming it or by putting it in water and then microwaving it for a minute or two and drying it, then thinned with a hackle. I prepped about 28 total inches of crepe wool in three colors for Brian's beard, which gave us more than we need. That's before straightening and thinning. From a cost standpoint, crepe wool is pretty inexpensive. I don't use the word cheap because to me that connotates shoddy and crepe can look pretty good. 
The reason we're using three different colors in the beard is because there's variation in everyone's hair. If we had used just one color, this is what a braid of the crepe looks like, it wouldn't look right because everybody's hair has different shades and tones in it naturally. Okay, now that the hair has been applied, let's trim the beard. Looking back, rather than using my beard trimmer to do the full cut, I should have used my wall clippers with a number eight guide, which is a one inch or 25 millimeter guide, and do a uniform trim, and then use the beard trimmer to detail the cut after that. So, there we have it. A hand laid beard and mustache in just under two hours. And while I'm not a hairstylist, this didn't turn out too badly. And in fact, Brian wound up wearing this beard all afternoon to a photo shoot and was complimented on his style and new look. <laughs>